I was part of the first generation to grow up with computers in the home. I had the first real home computer, the ZX81. It had no sound, no color, no graphics, and just 1K of memory. But I knew of its significance and alluring power. Of course, I still spent more time building dens in the woods and building go-karts to shoot down the road and having epic water fights, etc. Then came the ZX Spectrum and it had sound and color and graphics and 48K memory. I began to spend more time with my new friend. In 1994, I submitted my thesis on artificial intelligence as part of my degree in philosophy and psychology. Computers were a part of university life now. There was no internet yet, but we were able to talk to each other via the computers in the computer center, and I knew that AI was the future. Today, in 2021, AI is increasingly embedded into the technology we use, and we stand at the precipice of it being rolled out via the Internet of Things using the new 5G network across the whole world. Every new appliance will be connected via the web and will be monitored via AI. The singularity is near, writes Ray Kurzweil, who is the director of engineering at Google. The singularity is the point where AI becomes sentient and outsmarts our collective human intelligence. In the film The Social Dilemma, it's postulated that AI has already surpassed human weakness. Since the 1990s, I've been reading The New Scientist, so I've been watching the evolution of transhumanism for a while. Transhumanism is the idea that we will increasingly merge with our technology. Everything is now on the cards. Immortality, enhanced abilities, superhuman intelligence. Elon Musk warns us that AI poses the greatest existential risk that humanity has ever faced. And yet, he believes that we're cyborgs already plugged into our smartphones and laptops 24-7. With Neuralink, he simply seeks to make the interface between man and machine more efficient via a series of chips in the brain. The World Economic Forum suggests that we are on the verge of a fourth industrial revolution, where we will need to define what it means to be human. They talk about us being connected to a hive mind where all our thoughts are transparent and monitored, the ultimate open society. They suggest we will need to create a small space in the mind where we can still have original divergent thoughts. They even have a white paper on the Internet of Bodies. These are the people who work closely with international organizations such as the World Health Organization and the United Nations. They believe that a better world is possible via global governance. It's time to pay attention. I also believe that a better world is possible, and I am a fan of technology. However, I also believe that anything we can do with technology is actually a reflection of what we can already do but have forgotten. We use technology to replicate powers that we know somewhere deep inside that we should have and used to have before our ancient wisdom teachings were all but eradicated from the world. Mobile phones are incredible, but they only replicate our innate ability of telepathy. We are a telepathic race suffering from collective amnesia. Video calling via Chinese firm Zoom is a beautiful way to stay connected, but we already have the innate ability of clairvoyance where we can see our friends and events that are beyond our five senses. Plugging into super intelligence may seem appealing, But at what cost? We are already deeply rooted in the divine intelligence of all creation. It is important that we stay natural, that we stay in our bodies, that we remember the importance of physical touch and hug trees so that they may bless us with their connectivity to the earth and to the stars. We have another option than using technology to replace our humanity. This did not end well last time we tried it and led to the fall of our great civilization of Atlantis. 
Now is the time of the Aquarian Age, where we all remember that we are a shamanic people, a magical race with extraordinary powers. This knowledge was kept by the elites, by the ancient priesthoods, and when they were all killed, it fell into the hands of the very few who had lost their way, and much of it was lost forever. Until now, friends, now is the time that was predicted that the new earth would rise up from the ashes of ignorance. Now is the time of the common awakening. Now is the time of humanity's resurgence, when we all remember ourselves to be wizards and witches plugged into the divine creator. Technology should be used to amplify our natural abilities and not to replace them. It is time to realize who we really are and liberate our true magical selves from the pages of fiction and back into real life. The time of the great magical awakening is now. The age of wizards and witches has returned. Welcome home.